What's good guys? Welcome back to another crime story. So today we're going to be talking about this sadistic, psychopath, sexually driven couple from Canada who literally like disrupted the entire country. You probably heard about this story. This is about Paul Bernardo and his wife Carla Camoco. Probably pronouncing her name wrong, but you know, when you're a killer, really don't care about your name. <laughs> As I was reading about Carla, I was really baffled by her because when the articles begin, they begin to discuss how she was this girl who was driven with the love of pets. She wanted to be a veterinarian. You know, she was truly passionate. And then she meets this man, 23 year old Paul Bernardo, who charms her, but really is like a complete psychopath who wants to be in control and wants her to be basically what's the word submissive to him the two basically met and they ended up finding out they were interested in a lot of things together mainly a lot of the sexual relations of that part is what the articles are saying like they both were heavily involved in sex <laughs> over the next few years their relationship began to intense and i remember when i seen the movie about them i was like these two are so sick paul basically preyed on carla's younger sister tammy who was 15 years old and when i seen the movie i remember saying oh lord this man is gonna probably try to do something to her because he was just the type of man who was if if it's not my way, it's no way because he was so aggressive in his manner. And he even portrayed himself as like a master and Carla was pretty much his slave. Everything that he said went in it and that was all that was mostly important. Over the years, they began to be this couple who rapes and drugs young teenage girls. He became known as the Scarborough Rapist from what police have stated because of all of the rapes that he basically did in the community. Paul was really annoyed and upset that Carla was not a virgin when he met her. And when I remember reading about that a long time ago and seeing the movie, I was just like, dude, get over it. It is what it is. Like. She's not a virgin. Like, what What do you want? You can't take it back once you do it. Like, you can't. <laughs> so, by him knowing that Carla's younger sister, Tammy, was a virgin, he basically deployed a plot to get Tammy. And this is where Carla, I feel like, should have stepped up and was like, and should have put him in his place. It's one thing if you want to do what you want to do but it when it comes to my family that is all the way dead wrong like granted it's wrong period you're sexually assaulting women but to take it to the heights of her sister because she's not a virgin you are truly truly sick in the freaking head so to get their plot going carla stole basically this drug medicine from where she worked and it was like basically stole an anesthetic where it kind of pretty much would be undetected when it came to police finding out if or when these murders occurred as I began to read. On December 23rd, 1990, they had a Christmas party and Tammy was there, of course. So they begin to spike her drink. So as the party goes on, it's winding down. They bring Tammy to the base. Carla ended up putting the holothone over her mouth to get her unconscious and as she was unconscious they began to rape her and through this time Tammy begins to vomit on her own throw up and she ultimately died but what's crazy is like I said previously there weren't they weren't able to detect any drugs in her system so the anesthetic that Carla had was pretty much undetected and it was listed as Tammy's death as an accidental. As a couple then began to move in with one another, he, Paul begins to blame Carla for the death of Tammy. He was so upset that Tammy was dead because he couldn't continue to ploy out his plot of continued to rape this girl. Like, how sick can you really be? Like, you're mad because someone died. 
but you raped her. Like you raped her. And you're mad at your if your girlfriend because she died. How? How does that work out? How? I'm so confused. So this is when Carla creates her own plot. She decides to go out and get Paul a present. She goes out to try to find a young, pretty girl for Paul. So this first individual that they bring over, she actually is the only one that lived. She ends up bringing this teenage girl over. Her name is Jane. Not really sure if that's her real name, but in the article, they list her as Jane. The couple basically does the same thing that they did to Tammy. They spike her drink and they begin to brutally rape her. But not, they then begin to videotape it as well, like they did with Tammy. I forgot to say that too. They did videotape Tammy too, because I remember in the movie that they created, you guys should check it out. They also had like some of the footage, they didn't show it of course, but they had footage that, you know, they did this. The girl woke up the next day, she woke up like disoriented and she was very sore because of course you raped this girl. He had no knowledge of what took place. Then he takes it up a notch. He decides this isn't enough. So now we will meet Leslie McHaffley. On June 15th of 1991, Paul, kidnaps Les. He brings her back to their home and in this period he begins to rape her over a period of time. And not only do they kidnap her, of course, they videotape her and then that wasn't enough for him. He then decides to cut this poor girl's body up, those pieces in cement and then throws her body in a lake. On June 29th, a couple was out by the lake and this is when they were able to find Leslie's body and on that same day Paul and Carla actually got married and what's really crazy about this marriage right he tells them that you will not pronounce me as husband and wife you will pronounce me as man and wife he was so concluded on being master being in control that he wanted it to be known that Carla basically was to be submissive to him and that what he says goes. This man was like pure psychotic. April 16th of 1992, this is when he has another victim. The couple kidnap 15 year old Kristen French. They kidnap her from a church after Carla lures her to her vehicle and they then begin to do the same setup and it's like, as each person that they get, it intensifies. So with this one, of course they videotaped her and they tormented her and abusing her pretty much and sexually assaulting her. And it was reported that she did fight to stay alive. She tried to escape, you know, because the couple went out with family for Easter, but ultimately her body was found in a ditch April 30th. In January of 1993, Paul begins to continue to beat his wife. He then, he takes it up a notch on her. He starts to really beat her tail to the point she's hospitalized. Carla ended up moving in with a friend of her sister who was a police officer. And little did she and Paul know, the case against the sack the Scarborough rapist was actually built. Witnesses has come have come in basically giving identification of this individual. So sketches are being drawn up. More detail and evidence is coming about. And little do they know. Little do they know. It was psh, almost time for that tale. Then police ended up matching the sketch to Paul. They end up questioning Paul and asking him for a saliva swipe, which eventually proved that he was, in fact, the Scarborough rapist. You're a dumb rapist because who g you gave up your DNA and knowing that you raped these girls and killed them. They then begin to question Carla, question her about the whereabouts of Paul and all the different aspects when it comes to all the rape cases. And by her being in fear because they have stated that they were leaning in on Paul, she ends up telling her uncle everything. She then gets a lawyer and begins to work on a plea deal. Mid-February, Paul was actually arrested 
for the murder and rapes. When police searched the home, they were able to find the diary of Carla, which was very detailed. And it was very detailed when it pertained to each crime. So Carla ended up getting a plea deal. She would get 12 years behind bars. She would be eligible for parole after three years of serving. And she got this plea deal before, I guess, all of the evidence where they finally had the videotapes of seeing her actually having a hand in all the murders and the rapes. And they, this was known as like the worst plea deal of the Canadian culture, like the worst of the worst. Carla basically portrayed herself as the abusive wife. You know, she was abused by Paul, basically stating that he forced her to do these things. She was being, you know, submissive to him. But regardless of her guilt, she was able to get her plea deal and she served her time. By 4th of 2005, she was released from prison. But what's sad is to me is more so for her family because she had a part in her sister's death and they didn't know this until all of the information came out. And I think as a mother, sister, whatever, that would hurt me the most. Like you willingly put your sister in a situation like this. If that's what y'all wanted to do, cool but don't bring it over here to our f other family members you know and not only it's like they lost two kids because tammy's dead and then you went to prison it's like we don't even know you we don't you your life is basically ruined pretty much what i hear you know she has she's remarried she has three kids and she's living her life in montreal or wherever nonetheless she was known as the most hated serial killer because of the plea deal that she got and I mean it makes perfect sense because she had a helping hand in the rapes and the murders of those individuals but nonetheless that's sometimes the system and that's just how some people get off I mean we all know how that goes but nonetheless guys that is today's crime story I will see you guys in the next one bye bye and don't forget pause I ain't done yet. Don't forget to check out our podcast. We are now available on Apple Music and Google. So don't forget to check it out, the Milk Carton series. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you are new to the fam. Join our fam, girl. You know you want to. Poor guy. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.